Um, well, welcome to our African American Legends of Casey program this evening. My name is Andy Thomas. I'm the curator with the Casey Historical Museum. And um, we're very happy to see all of you out there today for this wonderful event. Uh, I would like to start off by recognizing some folks out in the audience uh, from the city, from the Museum Commission, uh, our museum staff, and we would like them to stand up and acknowledge that they're here. So we'll start with our Casey City Council. I have Mayor Elise Parton. Byron, Byron Thomas and then with the uh, KC City staff I have Mike Conley who is our assistant city manager our KC historical uh, commission let me introduce a few folks there I've got um, James Stewart who's our chairperson Pamela Sultan, who is our vice chairperson. Um, Charlita Earl. David Brinkman. Keith Stevenson, who's just joining us. And I also have my museum staff in here, Elizabeth Lumsden. And I want to thank all of y'all for all that you do to uh, support programs like this and, and whatnot. And we also have another one of our city council folks over here. And this is Mr. Phil Carter. Next, I want to introduce the hardworking folks that are on our Casey Museum African American Commission. Uh, we've got uh, Yvonne Smith, who's our president. <laughs> Pamela Sultan is our vice president. <laughs> Ebony Reed, our secretary, could not make it tonight, um, but uh, we appreciate everything that she's been able to do for us. <laughs> Samara Wigfall. Okay, wasn't able to make it out. And then I've got um, James Denny <laughs> and Charlita Earl. <laughs> and we want to also thank them for all the hard work they have really put in the work to, to help us out with all events like this. And um, I, I've got uh, we've got to know each other uh, uh, very closely the last four years. Um, we also have a special guest here, and you will hear a little bit more about that later. That is um, Mr. Mike Williams. Um, so now I'm going to um, ask that our mayor, Elise Barton, come up uh, to share some remarks with you for this evening. Thank you, Andy, and thank you all for being here tonight. What a delight and an honor it is to get together and to gather to celebrate so many legends, to celebrate the legacy that all those who are being recognized tonight have brought to the world, but also brought to Casey. This is the culmination of a lot of hard work um, by volunteers, people who are not being paid other than um, Andy and Elizabeth, who are our staff, everybody else is volunteering to make a positive difference. Years ago, our former mayor pro tem and I, Skip Jenkins, started working really hard on focusing on diversifying the museum commission. We knew we had to start there if we were going to make a difference, and we did, and we've had so many great commissioners that have joined the team um, with a great mindset towards what amazing museums look like. And with that, we finally got some great backing for Andy and Elizabeth to do good work, thanks to um, all of the, the museum commissioners that are here. 
And that has created not just things like five years of celebrating voices and elevating all those who have made a difference in Casey, but three years of gathering here to celebrate legends. It has also meant that people like Yvonne, who aren't even on the museum commission, give of their time to make sure that people like you who are here tonight are celebrated and that we know your stories because it's important. But also importantly, it has meant a permanent exhibit in the city of Casey Museum so that we are telling our story more fully. And thank you so much for being a part of that and creating that success. Enjoy tonight. Thank you, Mar Mayor Martin. And now we're on to the main event, as they say. And I'm going to have uh, Yvonne Smith come up here. Yvonne is heart and soul in, of this, uh, what we've been doing, and she uh, has poured herself into it. And um, Yvonne, come on up and let's get going. decided that we needed to do a little more recognition for our legends. So they have donated the funds that we now have these three beautiful plaques of all the legends from every year are on the plaques. And they will be presented into the library, I'm sorry, to the museum. So thank you, Mike, and thank you. PowerPoint presentation is going to be on Thaddeus Chalvers. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to hear about people that lived and are still living, some that are not. Their family members and friends are here. We're going to hear about what they did in our community. Thaddeus Chalvers, born August 31st, 1934, in North South Carolina, to the late Benjamin Harris Shoppers, Annie Rebecca Simpson. He had four brothers and three sisters. He is, unfortunately, the only sibling left. He was married to the late May Catherine Felder Shivers for 61 years, and they were the parents of five boys and one girl. He moved to Casey at an early age, and his first job was in construction. He became a custodian at the Wardlaw Junior High School until he had the opportunity to work here in Casey at Brooklyn Casey High School, June 11, 1968. He retired from BC after 51 years of service. On his 88th birthday in 2022, there was a community parade for him. And Beatty, as we know him, Beatty, everyone knows him as Beatty, and he felt as if he was a celebrity. This is Mr. Thetty's Shivers. Beatty found, uh, Beatty can be found these days sitting on his porch on Julius Felder Street, waving at all the cars going by. Whether he knows you or not, it does not matter. But he knows just about everybody. And according to him, he has a good life. And he is thankful for the people that he's touched and the people that he knows. I want to say a little bit about him just to say, Mr. Shivers, I love to talk to him as I walk to our community garden. Um, he's always asking about the okra that I'm planting every year. He makes sure and tell me, he says, make sure that you pick that okra so it won't be stringy and it'll taste good. So that's just one of the many nuggets of wisdom that we still have in our community. In Casey, Mr. Thades Shivers. He's 
not here tonight, so we'll make sure he gets his certificate. The next person that we're going to be, oh, she's already on the screen, Ms. Bertha Ham Felder. Ms. Bertha Ham Felder was born on March 13, 1949 in Swansea, South Carolina, one of nine children. She attended Monroe Pickley School in Swansea. In 1967, she was married to Mr. MacArthur Felder, the love of her life, and they were blessed with two children, Jeanette Felder and Troy Felder. Her family moved to Casey in June of 1985. She worked in the kitchen of Fort Jackson Military Base. Later, she became the custodial worker for Pinewood Apartment in Casey, which is the same apartment complex in which she lives. She is known in the complex as Miss Burke and later Grandma. She has helped to raise many children in the Pinewood Apartments along with her own grand and great-grandchildren. She is now serving as one of the church mothers at Living Water Christian Center in Dixiana, where her grandson, Reverend Dr. D'Angelo Copley, is her pastor. Ms. Bertha's favorite saying is, baby, that's capital G-O-D, which is God got me, and I don't let nothing worry me. Ms. Hattie Foster. She attended Casey Elementary, Ida A. Bull Elementary School, and was one of the first African American students that helped to end segregation in Lexington II School District II around 1965 to 66. This experience of going to an all white school was very painful and changed her life forever. <coughs> Along with the Washington and Wise family, she was instrumental and going door to door to get as many black citizens registered to vote. Although she had experienced many instances of racism and ridicule during her school years, she is now enjoying the fruits of her labor. She is proud of the accomplishments of her later generations. She has held many positions as a member of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. She is an ordained preacher, the founder and pastor emeritus of New Beginning Christian Fellowship Baptist Church and holds an honorary Doctor of Divinity degree. For over 39 years, she has sung gospel music throughout South Carolina, North Carolina, California, and Alabama. She is married to Albert L. Crum, the mother of four daughters and four grandchildren. She recently retired from the South Carolina House of Representatives. And I just want to add that Ms. Crum has really um, been worried about not being able to show for this, but she did have a previous engagement with her granddaughter graduating. And so she asked some of her friends to come and accept her certificate in her honor. Washington was the second eldest child of nine children born to George and Mary Jane Smith of Casey, South Carolina. She was born 10 years after the physical ending of slavery on June 19, 1865. She continued to work on the Taylor Plantation in some capacity for the remainder of her life, and she was taught to read by the Taylor children and in turn was able to teach many of her grandchildren. Without a formal education, she was able to become a community organizer, banker, lawyer, counselor, and staunch child of God. Many of her first was learning to read from the plantation's owner's children, instituted the first daycare center at Flipper Temple Amy Church, 
negotiated and paid the assessment that allowed Mount Pisgah AME Church to separate and become an independent body <coughs> with its own pastor. She provided the deed to Mount Zion Baptist Church uh, as long as the location remained a church. And she had helped establish the Willing Workers Ministry in many churches in, in the KC West Columbia area. She was married to a man also named George Washington and was the mother of five children. She later became the caretaker of the very people that enslaved her ancestors, and when her health began to fail, she was treated by a direct descendant of the former slave owners, Dr. Edmund Taylor. Lily Street in Casey is named in her honor. And we do have several of her grandchildren here with us today, but we'd like for uh, Martha Washington Earl to come up and accept her plaque. Washington was born to Fred and Jamie Bell Kaysen in Columbia, South Carolina. She was married to the late Abraham Washington and together they had eight children. She and her sister-in-law, Ruth Elizabeth Washington Wise, known as Mary and Martha, together raised 15 children on Middle Street in Casey. Mrs. Washington became highly active in community outreach in the Casey West Columbia area by, col by collaborating with many community organizations. She worked in the office of the BEP Processing Voter Registration, Processing Voter sorry, Processing Voter Registration Applications for citizens of Lexington County, and was a foot soldier along with many of the civil rights activists of that time, traveling the rural areas registering citizens to vote. She was relentless in helping to integrate Lexington School District Two schools by attending school board meetings and showing up when the first African American students were registering to vote. She has been a faithful member of Mount Pisgah AME Church, serving in many leadership capacities, and even in her 90s, she's still active in community and church. I would like to ask her baby nephew, Dr. Ralph Wise, to come and accept her certificate. <laughs> As you can see, we have a lot and a very rich history here in Casey. Mrs. Lucy Hopkins Jones devoted her life to being an educator in Casey community. As a product of Casey, she returned to her roots after graduating from Benedict College and began teaching at the Ida A. Bull elementary school in 1945. After integration, she remained in the Lexington, II, Le Lexington School District 2 and was one of the first African American teachers at the BC Elementary Number 2 until she retired in 1982. Mrs. Jones was the first black woman to be hung on the walls of the Teachers Hall of Fame that is in the district office here in Casey. The highlights of her life was dedicating, dedication and love for teaching the whole child. She integrated classical music, table manners, and love. She took advantage of the opportunity to teach Adult, in adult education at night, when encouragement and teaching a new skill would change the many lives 
of the adults that are here in Casey and their environment. She often said, I always got a thrill out of seeing a child who could not read, learn to read. Mrs. Lucy Hopkins Jones was married to Walter L. Jones and is survived by her only daughter, Ina F. Tyler, two grandsons and four great-granddaughters. With the representative for Mrs. Lucy Hopkins Jones, please come forward. a lifelong resident of Casey, was born on August 25, 1932, to Barry and Hattie Thompson Waymer of rural Dorchester County. At an early age, she was taught that God should be first in your life, education and hard work are the keys to achieving your goals and the fight for equality is for everyone. As a lifetime member of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Casey, she was able to work on these foundational lessons taught by her parents. She was an activist for Equality for All and worked with the Urban League, Adult Education, and Voter Registration to achieve these goals. She was a graduate of Benedict College and taught English in Lexington School District 2, first at Lakeview High School and then after Integration Airport High School. Ms. Eunice touched the lives of many people including Dr. Rudolph Wise and Reverend Dr. Charles B. Jack Jackson, Sr., who both found success in their chosen fields. After retirement, she worked at the Aiken Barnwell Community Agency, helping citizens to receive available assistance. She was once told, you are so giving to others, your heavenly crown is going to be too heavy to wear, but that was the kind of person she was. Thank you. 